We got to spend more time talking about Brian Harson's massive hire of Ike Hilliard. We go to our friends on Locked On Steelers to tell us just how great this fit is. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Let's take a visit with our friends from the NFL channel, the Locked On Podcast Network. Locked On Steelers host, Chris Carter. Man, Auburn fans are hype. They are so excited about Brian Harson hiring Ike Hilliard. Of course, he was with the Steelers last season, but this is a guy that Auburn fans can, you know, they think that he can kind of help these wide receivers take a step forward going into 2022. What are your thoughts about this move? I mean, I think it's a good move for Auburn. You get an experienced receivers coach. I mean, he wasn't just with the Steelers. He's been with the Dolphins. He's been with Washington. He's been with the Bills. He, uh, he went back to Washington. Uh, you know, he's he's uh, you know he's been a guy that's 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 made his hay around the league. Um, so being in the NFL, getting a guy who knows what NFL receivers need, um, you know, that's a that's a challenge. And it's he's also worked with several different types of receivers. You know, I you know one thing I wrote about him when the Steelers acquired him. Uh, back in 2020 was, you know, his work with Terry McLaurin and the progress that Terry McLaurin saw as a rookie uh, and credited him with, with helping him get better in his separation and finishing routes. Um, those are the things that I think that, that Ike Hilly brings to the table. Now, I won't lie. It ain't all, you know, sunshine and roses. You know, a lot of Steelers fans were disappointed because uh, the wide receiver group hasn't really taken off in the, over the last two years. But one thing I would caution any Auburn fan who might hear that and think, oh, man, is this really something bad? You also have to understand that, it, you know, uh, Ike Hilly took over a rough spot. Because okay. not because of Ben Roethlisberger, but it, if you don't know the backstory of the Steelers wide receiver room about a year before that, they had a, a wide receiver coach named Daryl Drake and he passed away in the middle of training camp. Uh, and it was it was a very sad story. Wow. Like he he had he had like a health issue, went to the doctor, thought he was fine, came back and, and they, they woke up the next morning and he was gone. Oh um, and uh, it was traumatizing. Like there was a there was like two whole days of practice where like the receiver group just couldn't get it together because they're like that was our, that was our guy. That was our, yeah, that was our leader. Deal. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so they had, uh, I think Ray Sherman come in for like a, the, to finish that season out. But then Ike Hilliard came in after that. And, you know, that, that's a tough assignment to replace that guy in a room with a lot of young receivers. Um, and uh, it, it was a, it was a, it was a tough job. So anyone that has hangups about Ike Hilliard for any, you know, lack of being superstar receivers with Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool, I, I would add that context as well to the conversation on top of the fact that you had Ben Roethlisberger in the last two years of his career. Right. Yeah. And you know, not the big Ben that was playing, you know, five, six, seven years ago, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, I, I mentioned this on yesterday's edition of locked on Auburn, Chris, but it seems like the Pittsburgh Steelers for the past decade, any type of wide receiver that ended up on the roster became significantly better over the course of any kind of season. I mean, the development, I don't know if it's all development, Chris. I don't know if, you know, the way the Steelers organization is set up, they just figured out how to find productive wide receivers. But the fact that Auburn got Pittsburgh's wide receivers coach, I was like, cool, they have a part of that now. And, and mm -hmm. I think that's something that, you know, Auburn has been able to get talented, you know, four-star guys consistently into the room, but they're not turning them into NFL prospects. And I think that's something that's interesting. And even the guys that do turn into NFL players, you're know, like uh, Darius Slayton with the Giants. Yeah. Like, he wasn't great <laughs> at, at Auburn. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't think he was really given, you know, an opportunity to succeed. Maybe this will change that. It could. It very well could. Um, you know, one thing about the Steelers as an organization, they do have a great reputation with wide receivers. They have the most wide receivers to win Super Bowl MVP in NFL history with uh, Lynn Swan, Heinz Ward, and Santonio San Holmes. Sure. Um, and then on top of that, you add even just you cut those guys out, even just the last decade or so. You know, you have Antonio Brown, Emmanuel Sanders, Mike Wallace, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, Martavis Bryant. Uh, you know, and Antonio Brown still the greatest six-year run of any wide receiver in NFL history. Now, I right. Hilliard, he didn't. Have have, he didn't touch those guys. He was here. He was here in 2020 and 2021. Um, but one thing I think that you saw from Ike Hillier was he did get Deontay Johnson to buy into getting better. Now, Deontay Johnson, 
if you if you followed the Steelers closely, you, you you probably know what his case was. But like you know, going into in 2020, he dropped the ball a lot. He he just he couldn't he couldn't stay focused. He couldn't you know co- you know control the ball in tough situations. And sometimes he would just get in his own head, and you saw him start to make uncharacteristic mistakes. But then all throughout training camp this year. Every practice, he was the first guy out, and he would just be catching tennis balls, run, running, you know, pre- pretending to run routes, and then you'd catch something over his shoulder, you'd catch it over the other shoulder, you'd catch it from this angle, you'd catch it from that angle, and he'd catch it with a guy hanging on him. Like he would, he would do all those yeah. things. And for the first, I'd say, ten to twelve weeks of this season, Deontay Johnson was wide receiver one for the Pittsburgh Steelers, even with Ben Roethlisberger struggles, because he gets great separation. His biggest thing is he just needs to learn how to finish and hold on to the ball. Now those drops returned, I'd say, in the last like month or. So so of the season so he yeah. still has ways to go but that's the impact that you can get out of ike hilliard working with you because he helped him find that and i do think that that's something that you that, that you see in his progress uh you know deontay johnson going from being a major drop problem throughout all of 2020 to being you know it being something that kind of just poked its, its head up at the end of 2021 yeah, and, and I love earlier in our conversation, you mentioned different types of wide receivers. We mentioned Deontay Johnson, mm-hmm. Chase Claypool last mm-hmm. year, uh, Terry McLaurin. Deshaun Jackson is a guy, you know, Auburn's got a few speedsters, so you know maybe that's something that, that turns out and, and helps with their production. But even a guy like, you know, Pierre Garçon, which is another fast yeah. guy. Um, Robert Woods mm-hmm. is interesting. Brandon Marshall, one of the mm-hmm. best possession receivers of all time. Santana mm-hmm. Moss, Jamison Crowder. Steve Johnson. I mean, a ton of different dudes that do different things. Do you think the approach changes now, though, as a you know a position coach in college is different? Because you kind of have to go out yeah. and get the dudes that you're going to coach. You know, if you're a position coach in the league, the GM does that, and you just coach who's in front of you. And that's part of what he's going to be doing, right? Mm-hmm. Because he didn't recruit any of these guys he's about to start coaching. I think that's a benefit. No, absolutely. I, I think it's a, it is a benefit, but you also have to understand it's, there's a different ways in how you treat, you know, student athletes and professionals yeah, that's true you know, too. with the Steelers. One of the things I think the Steelers do, they don't like Bill Cowher. Like it was the old moniker of like, he got in your face when you didn't do something right. And, you know, he'd get, get that chin and he'd be like, oh, you got to stand up and do that. He'd do those right. things. Mike Tomlin's coaches don't operate that way. What right. they do is they say, this is the bar, meet it or we go find somebody who does. And, you know, and they'll help you like they won't just, you know, sink or swim. And, you know, if you if you if you sink by, but like they will. But they'll but they'll put that on you as a professional to meet this challenge to say, hey, you got to prove you if you want this, you can get it. But you got to do it. You got to do it. I'll show you how to get there. But you got to follow through. And that's a different temperament than when you're dealing with student athletes. Now, you do do that to us, uh, to us to a scale like that's still part of how you coach. But you have to be part of these young men's lives a, a, a lot more. A perfect example. I cover, uh, you know, in Pittsburgh here, I cover the University of Pittsburgh's football team. And I got yeah. to I got to cover, you know, Jordan Addison, who just won the Bolitnikoff Award. And I saw his coach, Brennan Marion, in one year. He changed that wide receiver room. Why? He found different ways to energize these guys. He found different ways to connect with these guys. And his predecessor was Chris Betty, who went on to be a wide receiver, to be wide receiver coach for the Chargers. Um, and you know, but the the year before he got there, Pitt, you know, Pitt had a major drops problem in, in 2020. They, they, their receivers were just dropping passes left and right. They couldn't be consistent. And Kenny yeah. Pickett, who everyone loves now, wasn't able to get those big numbers because so many of his passes were drops. 2021. That flipped upside down. But when I talked to Brennan Marion, one thing that he told me was like, he was, you got to, you, you got to get these kids to believe in themselves, but you also have to, you know, help them have fun with this. And I think that's something that in college that it might be easier for, you know, for guys to, to guys to grasp onto. Now, the other, the other thing about Ike Hilliard is, you know, when, when, when you look, when you look at, you know, who he is, he's 45 years old. Mm-hmm. So he's not young young like like brennan marion's only a few more years older he's in his mid-30s he's only a few years older than i am sure. um but you know he's, he's, he's not one of those younger guys but he's been in the nfl he knows what it takes to get to the nfl he, he played in a super bowl with the giants uh you know and i think that there's a level to that that like he's like okay let me tap into how do i connect with these kids how do i pull them the best out of them and get them to show up that i think will be the biggest challenge for him not just the recruiting aspect but saying like the talent that we have on this roster and auburn i mean auburn gets great talent all the time that, that's sure. i mean it's 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 part of the sec i, I watch a lot of auburn games um uh, but you know it's uh you know i think that's where ike hilliard's going to have to step up for auburn is try to find a way to reconnect with college kids because Connecting with pro guys, it's just a it's a different mental game because they there's just so much more expected of them. 
We'll continue our conversation with Chris in just a moment. I got to tell you about our friends at runyourpool.com. March Madness is just weeks away. That means you need to start and go ahead and think about where you're going to be running your brackets this year. Are you going for the usual or are you going for the best? Well, we've done our homework here at Locked On, and we are running all of our brackets with runyourpool.com. Along with standard brackets, Run Your Pool, they offer tons of different custom options, different types of scoring, way more features than you will find at ESPN or CBS. If you got a business, it's a great way to set up a pool for your company. If you got a group of friends or a fantasy football league that you want to compete with, it's super easy. Uh, clearly, we believe in Run Your Pool because, like I said, we're running our brackets there ourselves, and there's no truer test than that. If you want to play against us, the host of, uh, throughout the Locked On Podcast Network, for a shot at a cash prize, join us at runyourpool.com slash locked on. And while you're there, create your own pool for your friends and family. Enter pure madness, one word, at checkout for $10 off your custom pool. All rules and details will be available there. Runyourpool.com slash locked on. Check it out. Also, today's show brought to you by the best tasting protein bar ever, Built Bar. Built Bar is the protein bar that looks and tastes like a candy bar with a ton of different flavors, whether it's chocolate or peanut butter or double chocolate or cookies and cream, or you know they, they even have fruit flavored. So be sure to check all of it out. And uh, when you're on their website at Built.com, you'll see a ton of different products, a ton of different flavors, but all of it extremely good for you. Check it out, Built.com. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off. That's at Built.com. What do you think about him connecting with high school kids? Because that's going to be a big part of any position coach at the college level is it's almost like, you know, depending on how the situation is, but recruiting is just as big of a job as making sure the guys in your position room are, are, are ready to go on Saturdays. And, you know, he, I think that's the biggest question mark about this hire. I love everything about this hire, but mm -hmm. it's impossible to know if a guy can recruit or not, because I think at some point it's just an innate ability of if you can or can't do it. It seems like we've had success in the SEC when guys go from the NFL to the college ranks, because I think you can have a little bit different, you mm -hmm. know, more tools in your tool belt as far as what you can pitch to these yeah. guys. And also, I mean, he he was a stud at Florida, so I right. mean, he he knows he knows the SEC. But what are your thoughts on on that from a personality standpoint? Well, I mean, I think that this is a guy who can he can sell that for sure. I mean, this is a guy he played in the SEC coming up. He grew up in Louisiana. Uh, you know, he you know, he's he's of the South, and so he knows he has the experience right. of that environment. And again, this was a guy in college. He didn't. He wasn't just a beast. He earned the seventh overall pick when he was when he was drafted like he was he was the, he was top 10 material when he came out into the nfl i believe 1997 okay. um and like but that's something that you go and you be like hey that's something you could sell listen not only am i a successful coach not only have i been in the nfl not only worked with these guys i'm working at at a major sec school and I know, I, you know, I know, I know what the SEC is about, and I know how to get. I know what it takes to get to be a top ten overall pick in the NFL draft. All those things are so. Now, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not so you know because he came here in 2020 in the middle of the pandemic, so we haven't had the the interpersonal relationships yeah. that, that 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 you normally could if this was you know three or four years ago where I could walk in the locker room or walk around the Steelers practice ceiling and be like, hey, so uh, what you think about this and and, and and you know get that kind of a relationship, but um you know because that's just the NFL's been in these bubbles, but uh but I do get that this impression that this is a guy who knows the room that he's in. Um, and he knows how to operate. He knows how to operate and manage relationships. Um, you know, and this was a guy who, you know, when he took over the Steelers receiver room this past year, they lost Juju Smith Schuster in like week five. Right. And, uh, and and they needed to find a way to still play through it. Uh, he got production out of a guy named Ray Ray McLeod, who was the team's sixth receiver coming into the season. Then uh, he comes up and he ends up being like a really tough slot option for the Steelers you know, to bail them out in some tight games. Uh, you know, th that I think that's the kind of guy he, he understands there's different challenges. And I, I think that's sometimes the thing that um, that receivers coaches, especially in college, can get stuck on is not understanding how to adapt to different types of receivers. Is this guy a speedster? Is this guy a, 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 a separator? Is this guy a combat catch guy? And I, I get I got the impression that Ike Hilliard was good at identifying what guy's strengths are and letting them be those strengths. I read somewhere that he was on the short list to be the OC for the Detroit Lions. Can you hmm. confirm that? Have you heard that? I mean, is no. he 
Okay, you haven't heard that. Okay. Yeah, it, 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 honestly, it was a bit of a surprise that he wasn't coming back to Pittsburgh as this as the Steelers wide receivers coach. It, it was more so uh, when they got um oh, forget Frisman Jackson, I think it was from the Panthers. Uh, but the, he's he's the Steelers new. When they announced that, that's was like everyone on the beat. And I'm in the Steelers practice facility all the time. Oh. I'm you know I, you know I'm I'm sitting on the zooms when they open them up to us. And you know everybody, I asked, I texted around like, hey, did I miss that? Was I lazy? And they're like, no, we had no idea that he, that this was happening. Uh, we we thought that I killed was just coming back so uh, honestly i didn't hear any rumblings of that because we didn't hear any rumblings that he was not coming back to the steelers um across the beat so so that was a a surprise do you think that this move has kind of been in place for a while and it just became public or do you think um the steelers just wanted to kind of move on i think it's more so you have to understand the Steelers are in a, are in a in a very big transition right now offensively. No Ben yeah. Roethlisberger, but on top of that, when Hilliard took the job, they had an offensive coordinator by by the name of Randy Feekner. Randy Feekner was Ben Roethlisberger's guy. Like Randy yeah. Feekner took over for Todd Haley because Ben Roethlisberger and Todd Haley never really saw eye to eye. Even though Todd Haley did a great job extending his career by shortening shortening up his his uh you know his release time. Um, but Randy Feekner, when he took over the offense, there was a different direction that the Steelers were headed in, and Ike Hilliard was coming again with Daryl Drake, you know, passing away, uh, you know, in, in that situation. He came in with a different mindset of this. And now, uh, you know, Randy Feetner after 2020 was gone. And in 2021, Matt Canada took over. And that's a new offensive coach. So I think that this was more so they're changing a lot. Of, I think they're cleaning house a bit on the on the off, offensive side. Um, the Adrian Clem, the team's offensive line coach, went to Oregon middle of the season, crazy enough. And then his backup, Chris Morgan, is now the offensive line coach at Chicago. I, I don't I think that was an indictment at all of Ike Hillier. I think it was just more so, hey, the Steelers are like, we, we got to switch some things up. We're going to be a completely different offense. This isn't going to be a Ben Roethlisberger guy who, you know, shrugs off three dudes and throws a 50-yard bomb anymore. Sure. Uh, th- this has to be an offense that operates around maybe not Najee Harris and, and you know we invest in a better offensive line and Pat Fryer. You can't say like Najee that. Harris on this show, Chris. You can't oh, yeah, say he's dang, he did y'all that dirty. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I listen, I get it, I get it. You know, I've I've uh, I I've watched I watched plenty, but hey, man, I still say one of my favorite live watching sporting moments of all time that didn't involve a team that I covered or, or watched or was from Pittsburgh was yeah. absolutely the the uh, the return the return field goal in the, the uh, in the Iron Bowl the kick six I didn't know what you guys called it called the I, kick six. Yep. I just I just remember being like this is this is too awesome and uh, one of the best was, nights of my life I was, it, it was in, cool. in, in fraternity block seating second row in the stadium, <laughs> one of the first people oh on you the- were there. Yeah, man, that's, that's one of the craziest nights of my life. It was incredible. It was man, incredible. I, I I remember sitting. I was with my with my roommate Tana, and we were sitting there watching it in our apartment, and we we're like, "This is happening!" Like, like we 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 were losing it. Um, uh, so so listen, I, I totally get it. I, I like Auburn. I like I like Oregon. Sure. I like I like a lot of the stuff that that that's coming out, and I've enjoyed watching a lot of Auburn games over the years. Um, but but yeah, sorry, man. But but that the Najee Harris is that dude. But no, I just get, joking. yeah, no, I, he's. I He's, uh, he's for sure. Uh, hey, w- w- whenever, uh, Chris, whenever I get NFL hosts on, um, I just kind of love asking uh, about, you know, the, the Auburn players on the roster. And I actually didn't realize this. I looked it up right before we connected. But Montrevious Adams is yeah, is a Steeler. Uh, is, is he playing? I, I, w- I wasn't familiar he was a Pittsburgh Steeler. So actually, that happened mid season this year. Um, they because- he was with the Pats going into the season, I think. So I think he was with the Packers and the Saints, and he was bouncing around. But he was on the Saints practice squad, and the Steelers' defensive line got destroyed. Yeah. Stephon Tuitt never returned this year, and he had 11 sacks in 2020. They were hoping he would come back, but his brother passed away, and then he it kind of delayed a knee surgery that he needed, and that kind of put him in a position where he wasn't going to be able to return for the season. And then okay. Tyson Oluolu, uh, defensive of uh, a defensive tackle that, that was going to basically replace Tuitt, he got hurt in like week two. And so it was really just Cam Hayward and a bunch of practice squad dudes. And so uh, after about, like, I'd say six or seven weeks of trying to, to, to find, you know, one of those lower guys to come through, um, he then, uh, you know, they, they went and signed Montrevious Adams and he became a difference maker. He was he became like their, their, their next best guy. And I think he's going to be a guy that they're going to try to resign because I don't think he's going to get like a major deal somewhere. But they'll give him like, hey, here's a two year deal. You, you play it out. You could be, you know, you could play alongside Cam Hayward and TJ Watt and, and all yeah. these guys up front. So I think there's going to be, uh, you know, there, you, you'll probably see him stick around at Pittsburgh because all indications I heard and saw, they liked him and he liked them. Yeah, I, I thought he would be a guy that would have had more of an impact mm-hmm. in the league. In, in college, he was so good at, you know, generating some penetration, like from the interior defensive line. 
and he had Carl Lawson next to him, you know, who's who's making a lot of money with the Jets now. But um, that was um, that was a fun tandem for sure to, to cover here on the planes. All right, I, I want to talk about some of the stuff that Chris said that stood out to me. But first, hey, football is over. It's the off season, but not at BetOnline.net. They always have stuff going on, obviously, with basketball, college and pro, um, hockey, boxing, UFC odds. They have everything at BetOnline.net. So be sure to check that out. BetOnline.net, where the game starts. I think Chris gave us a lot of really good things to think about. I think Chris gave us a lot of really good information there about the hire of Ike Hilliard. The more I hear about this dude, the more I like him. And I'm not just saying that. I think it's a home run move. And the biggest thing that Chris kind of brought up was connections. Can he connect with kids and you know non-professional athletes? That's the biggest question. And I think that goes with recruiting the high school kids. And I think it also goes with him stepping into that locker room and looking at his wide receivers and saying, hey, you know, I chose you guys. I got to develop you guys, and I'm looking forward to taking that next level. The biggest winner in all this is Shedrick Jackson, in my opinion. I think he's going to have a ton of opportunity. I think he's going to have a ton of, you know, I, I think his brain and his mindset and his approach is in the right place. I just don't know how much he's really been developed over the course of this season. And look, going into last year, my big question was, you know, what does Shed Jackson look like in Brian Harson's offense? And in that first game, he looked so much quicker, so much more athletic. He moved so much better. But over the course of the season, it seems like they kind of backed away from him a little bit. Because I think some of that had to do with Kobe Hudson kind of ascending, who is a natural wide receiver, but not for Auburn anymore. Uh, Demetrius Robertson's role. I mean, there was a lot of things that happened over the course of last year. But I think with the spring happening, I, I really think Shedrick Jackson could be a winner with this hire. Also, you know, Javarius Johnson, you know, we talked about the fact that, you know, Coach Hilliard has worked with different types of wide receivers. So Shed Jackson's your outside guy. Johnson's your inside guy. It sounds like he's staying despite, you know, reports of him possibly leaving. It sounds like he's going to be here to stay, which is great. Um, assuming that's true. Uh, and then Malcolm Johnson Jr., I've mentioned him before the, the speedster who aligns with the Pierre Garçon uh, and the and Deshaun Jackson. And so I think there's a lot to like here. And then Jay Fair is a dude that I think physically looks like some of these dudes. Stevie Johnson, Brandon Marshall. Not saying he's as good as them, but I'm just saying I think that's the type of style of wide receiver he's going to try to be at the college level. I love this. I absolutely love this move, and I think Auburn fans should be really, really excited about it. Props to Brian Harson. Um, and I didn't realize, and this is just ignorance on my part, I didn't realize that he wasn't currently with the Steelers. So Brian Harson being able to go and get him, that makes a little bit more sense. I'm glad that Chris kind of gave us some history on that. And Pittsburgh, it, doesn't, it didn't sound like it was an issue there. Just sounds like the organization was going a different way offensively. And props to Brian Harson for being aware of that and going after him. I think that's a great move. I, I really do. So, all in all, fantastic stuff. Fantastic stuff. No question about it. Thank you so much to Chris for joining us. Thank you so much for you for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, please click subscribe. A ton of you guys are watching and not subscribed. It helps the channel out a ton if you subscribe and like the videos. If you're listening on iTunes, please rate and leave five stars as a review. That helps us a ton as well. If you get any kind of enjoyment or satisfaction out of these every day, would really, really appreciate that. Hey, we'll be back on Monday right here on Locked on Auburn.